Wyoming 149 to 103. Let's get that bracket up on the screen. Our Red Alliance will be moving on to play match number 13. And our Blue Alliance, that was their last match of this event. Please give a huge thank you to our Blue Alliance teams for an absolutely excellent job well done. 33-10, 59-40, 39-40, and 34-78. Robo Sports Network, over to you. All right, we finished our first match of round four. 33-10, unfortunately not able to move much after autonomous mode. Did the Blue Alliance have any shot after that, Adrian? You know, unfortunately, in Rapid React, if you, one of your robots doesn't work for the entire match, in a tournament of this caliber, there's not really anything you can do to come back. To be honest with you, the score doesn't really tell the story of how not close this match was. The Red Alliance really started running away with it, but then we saw some issues happening to that Red Alliance at the end game. Walk us through what happened there, Steve, and I'll bring it up on the replay. Well, it looked like they were trying to have uh, 3175 uh, Night Vision come in and uh, go up to that high bar. Now, 2910 has had a very consistent climb. They use their shooter hood to tilt their robot. Consistent, but violent uh, is probably how you would describe Jack and the Bot's climb. So, since they get all, all, all the way up on the traversal bar, they pull their robot all the way up. There's no real extension. Um, we see them going for the high here. They're getting a little bit of bumping, and then just that oscillation a little too much for their hooks. Uh, 254 able to complete their own traversal, and we have seen uh, 2910 come back from falling off the bar before, so I don't necessarily predict that they'll have a lot of long-term damage from this, but it's still a little bit worrying. Um, you really want to have a consistent traversal hang. 3175 able to get to the high bar though, so uh, they, won't, they won't be at as much a disadvantage uh, against any team with the possibility of triple traversal. Over your shoulder, Steve, I can see the repairs going on as 2910 checks out their robot, makes a few adjustments, but this isn't the first time they've had this happen throughout the season, and it probably won't be the last one either, so I didn't you're, say at you're this calling tournament. It, you're calling it right now. You're <laughs> saying that 2910 is going to slam into the driver's <laughs> station wall, flip over three times, and then lose the tournament because of that? I'm not saying that at all. I'm just saying okay. robots are consistent. They usually do things once. They'll do it again and again and again. Mason, and that's something we have seen here. Mason, this sounds like the start of like an announcer's curse here. I don't know <laughs> if you want to be saying stuff like that. All right, let's look at our playoff match number 12. Now, these teams have had quite a bit of time to cool off. They did not have to play in round three, so they're coming in in round four. We have the Red Alliance, which is our number one seed, and then we have our Blue Alliance, which is our number three seed. They're the one who set, upset the number two seed in the round three. Adrian, yep. you want to tell us about the Red Alliance here? Yeah, the Red Alliance has been just storming through the competition at this event. Our number one undefeated team, Citrus Circuits, as the captain, along with their first overall pick, 44-14 high tide. Um, and we've seen them swap out, um, you know, the roles that they're playing, or not swap out the roles that they're playing, but they, we've seen the defense um, mostly on 44-14 so that Citrus Circuits can basically run the field. Um, it's gonna be pretty hard to shut down this alliance, but if anybody has the firepower to do it, I'm pretty sure it's this number three alliance. And this 498 Cobra Commanders is the first time they're taking up the field as part of this alliance. But Steve, tell us about the Blue Alliance here. Well, Orbit has, most, has gotten themselves back up to near their top form, and so the, the ability to shoot on the move makes them a very difficult uh, defensive target. Uh, they're able to shoot from everywhere across the field, and they don't even go to the next place with the cargo when they shoot. They're just always shooting and driving. And so uh, the Red Lions, we've seen them do some triple offense. Uh, 973's got their shot pretty dialed in with that new robot but they are missing the capability of climbing. They just have the two climbers, uh, 6800 Valor and 1690 Orbit. So even though it's fast, they can still only get those 30 points. Yeah, so the last time we saw these alliances play was back in round two. The blue alliance was just crazy amount of cargo going up in the air. I wonder though if this 498 Cobra Commander's changeout on the red alliance is part of trying to up 
the Blue Alliance in the end game, having a more traverse, triple traverse potential with these robots. We're going to learn a lot more once we see these robots play on the field. Anything can happen just like we saw in the last round. So, Tom, introduce us to these teams down on the field. I think he's doing it on purpose at this point. <laughs> it's all good. All right. Playoff match number 12, very important match in our playoff structure. The winner of this match goes straight to the finals. The loser goes to the loser bracket. They have to play one more match and win to make it to the finals. So we may be seeing this matchup again in a couple matches, or we can see one of these teams going home. Not this match, though. No one's going home this match. So let's figure out who's going to go into the finals. Maybe it's the Red Alliance. Starting with 44-14. From Ventura, California, it's high tide. Their alliance partners in the middle, Team 498. From Glendale, it's the Cobra Commanders. And rounding it out, Team 1678. From Davis, it's the Citrus Circuit. Red Alliance also has a fourth robot on their alliance. Let's get up for 28-13. From Saratoga, it's the Gearheads. Over on blue, they want to be the first alliance to finals. It seems 68. 68. 6,800. From Austin, Texas, it's Valor. Their partner's in the middle, Team 1690. All the way from Israel, it's Orbit. Rounding it out, we have 973. From Atascadero, it's the Gray Box. And the final robot on the Blue Alliance team, 8033. From Piedmont, it's Highlander Robotics. Winner goes to the finals. Loser has to fight a little bit harder to keep it in. We have a green light. We're waiting on a couple things. We have a thumbs up from Fletcher. Drivers behind the lines. Playoff match number 12 in three. Two, one, go! Here we go. At the end of this match, we will have our first finalists here at the 2022 Chessy Champs in auto. We already have a ton of cargo up in that upper goal. High Tide doing their thing, Orbit doing their thing. We are neck and neck, 46 to 46, coming out of the autonomous period. Now we transition to the tele-operated period of the match where drivers control their robot via wireless link with joysticks. Already it looks like 498 is going and putting the defense on 1690. 1690 able to swerve their way around trying to get out and shoot. They get a couple up and in. We'll see how this defensive battle progresses between 498 and 1690. Right now, the scores are very tight on the big board, 76 to 74. We've got Red Alliance teams, 44-14, High Tide, and the Citrus Circuits playing in an undefended fashion currently. It might be hard to stop their scoring potential, but Blue seems to have what it takes right now. They're up by just the slimmest of margins on the big board. 498 is still giving 1690 the business. They are stuck on them like they were super glued on and they're not coming off. Great job on defense by 498. Meanwhile, on the red side of the field, we still have Citrus Circuits and High Tide scoring at will undefended. But Valor 6800 is doing their best to catch up. 973 haven't said their name much, much this round probably because they're so very short, but they are doing their best to keep up with the blue cargo up at the top. 
30 seconds left of this match, and it looks like the Red Alliance has an eight point advantage on the big board. This is gonna come down right to the end. We've got 20 seconds left of this match, and teams are starting their climb up to the high bars. It looks like 6800 is making their way up. Orbit is going up. High Tide and 1678 going up. We've got two blue robots on the traversal. We've got two red robots on the traversal. Can we get one more? We cannot. That was pretty close at the end. The hang points seem to be equal between red and blue. So we're just gonna have to see what happens. We'll be right back with the final scores to that match. We've got the score going up. Moving on to the finals, the Red Alliance. The Blue Alliance is still alive though. Since the Blue Alliance has only just had their first loss, they will now move into the lower bracket and take on the number two Alliance, the winner of which will then move into finals. All right, Mason. Everybody over there, RSN, what you got? Oh, that was a great match. I mean, it was neck and neck throughout the entire thing. Steve, give me a quick overview of what we saw there. A really very slow, inexorable cargo lead just from the Red Alliance because 1690 Orbit was defended extremely well by 498 Cobra Commanders. Coming into this playoff tournament, their first match, and just really slowing down a top flight team. There was so much to take in there. There was a lot of action happening on the field. We're going to go to our replay booth. Adrian, I want you to walk us through this, starting with this awesome autonomous mode. I mean, all the teams came to play in this autonomous mode. It's just cargo after cargo after cargo going in there. One miss from the blue. And both robots on red and blue coming back with that second volley makes them pretty perfectly, but here is where the match starts to take a turn in Red's favor, because immediately uh, as teleoperated period starts, Red sends defense onto the blue side of the field. And that's really something that changed the game right here as Orbit starts to get pinned here in the corner by 498, the Cobra Commanders. Remember, that was the team that was introduced for the first time in this playoff tournament with a special mission. It's like they were just sitting there in the bullpen getting ready to go tackle Orbit. And we've seen D play on Orbit, and it didn't really slow Orbit down, but this was something, there was something different about this one. And if you look right now, the Red Alliance is ahead by one, sometimes two cargo, and you will see how consistent that stays throughout almost the entire match. Um, I commented up here um, in this match how close it was back and forth, and neither, uh, neither alliance had more than a two cargo lead at any point, um, really most of this match. And that's really what we're seeing is that we've got 6,800, one robot on the blue alliance, 973 robot, two on the blue alliance. They're just scoring full time. But Orbit, this superpower robot, is really reduced to about third one third of a robot at this point because of this epic defense that's being played on them. And that leaves Citrus Circuits alone to go being scoring by themselves and their partner High Tide 4414. And it's really impressive. Up until this point, the the Blue Alliance having to use their second partner, 973, not one of their primary scorers. Uh, they, along with Valor, able to keep up with the two primary scorers from the Red Alliance for almost this entire teleoperated period. And I just love this defense doesn't let up. We've been watching it for 45 seconds now, and they're still just 
glued to orbit. It's like they've got super glue stuck to that bumper holding them together. Exactly. If you're playing swerve defense, this is the model. You never leave their bumpers. There's no reason to let them get any separation. Just slow them down as for as many of their movements as you possibly can. But you got to hand it to orbit. They're a robot that's tough enough, built durable enough, that they can get beat up an entire match, and they get these few moments to break away. They suck up a ball, and they're able to shoot over the top of their partners and still make or their defender and actually make some of the shots into the goal. It was at this point in the match when I set up here at the desk. This is the highest lead that Red has had so far, and it's only by a few cargo. Um, both, I mean, impressive scores on both sides of the field, and with only 20 seconds left, both teams start to execute their end game. Blue sends two robots back to climb with 18 seconds left, but look at the red climbing zone. There are literally no robots there. And and a, di we, a dichotomy that we see here from the Red Alliance, they've sent out both of their configurations that we expect to see. Earlier in the tournament, they had 28-13 going up to the traversal bar after uh, playing teleoperated, but here, 498 comes in late. Uh, they don't even get any hangar points, but how much is, the, is their defense worth during the rest of the match? That's a, that's a tough decision that the number one alliance will have to make and you before each and every match. And you notice that 973 stays out. They do not have a climber. Really not able to maximize, I bet, as much as they would have liked because after uh, both of their partners retreated to the climber zone, they were really only able to score about three cargo, um, which is not as much as I would have expected being absolutely left alone on the field. So let's take a look at our bracket. Um, fortunately, for both alliances in that match, nobody's day is done yet. Both of those teams were undefeated going into round four. Remember, round four was a mix. Our first match was a loser's bracket match. So that meant the loser was done for the day, their weekend was over, but the winner got to advance to round five. But the second match of round four was on the winner's bracket, on the upstairs portion of this screen. The winner of that match, they're going to the finals. They get another bye. In this case, that's 1678's alliance. The number one seed alliance has actually gotten two buys now. But the loser, 16, uh, 6800's alliance, they actually get to play again in our very next match. Round five is going to be a single match round, and the winner of that match goes to the finals. We're going to talk more about that match and introduce those teams in a little bit, but first, we're going to send it down to the field to continue on with our award ceremony.